Hello, this is Haku the Bean, and I'm here with a very long SCP article called SCP-6666, or I think it was the Demon Lahire and the Dread at Titania. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. And if you do not end up enjoying this video, that's fine. If you don't want to hear a long as heck um, SCP article, you might want to skip out now because, uh, judging from the size of the uh, this page, this article is probably going to take at least an hour or two to read. If you are prepared for this, then please, then let's continue. Once again, this is Project Paragon, SCP-6666. This, this entity is a, is a level 5 top secret it, esoteric it, anthomial class entity that has a disruption class of Eki and a risk class of Critical. <sighs> Special Containment Procedures The containment of SCP-6666 as well as SCP-2254, 4812, and SCP-4840 are under the express supervision of Project Paragon and Applied Task Force Het-1 Lance of Longinus. Due to the potential oh, Astrological ramifications of SCP-6666, special precautions must be taken to ensure SCP-6666 is not exposed to other entities contained by Project Paragon. The Paragon South America Forward Operating Site, Sapphos, has been directed around the access shaft leading to SCP-66. Under no circumstances are... Excuse me. Under no circumstances are unauthorized personnel to be permitted access to Sapphos, and lethal force has been authorized against any personnel or groups who would attempt to breach the one kilometer exclusion zone surrounding SCP 6666. Periodically, fire teams must enter the super exclusion area immediately surrounding SCP 66 and 66 and use incendiary devices to slow the advance of SCP 6666's root structure. Personnel involved in these fire teams are allowed only 15 minutes of sustained exposure to the SCP-6666 root system. Any personnel directly observing SCP, I'm going to start calling it the tree. The tree must do so from an aerial vehicle or from observation towers Alpha, Bravo, or Charlie. Tower Delta uh, is for aerial vehicle launch only. Containment Memorandum. No person now are are afraid to come within one kilometer of SCP of the tree at any time. All observation of SCP six 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 A must be done remotely. Paragon Sappho's primary points of contact: Director Sophia Light, Director Western Regional Command, Director Kane Pathos Crow, Director Foundation Technology. Director Shannon Lancaster, Director Project Director Paragon, Director Corin Mathis, Director Department of Ant Antediluvian Research, Dr. Osmond Aniles, Lead Researcher SCP-6666, Commander Alexandro Ofreitas, Paragon South America Forward and Offering Site Chief, Commander Cecilia uh, Astray. Het one commander. Description SCP-6666 is a colossal botanical entity located near four degree 
I don't know how to read that actually. I don't know how to do longitude, latitude stuff. And the Amazon rainforest. SCP-6666 is comprised of a wide trunk and many thousands of arcing branches, reaching away from the center mass like a tree. Though the tree does not closely resemble any known species of similar biological structures, the tree's trunk is roughly 380 meters in diameter, and the entire structure reaches a height of nearly 9.2 kilometers. This tree shows no, no signs of life at a cellular level. The tree is inverted, suspended by its con considerable root system from the top of a massive little spear void in the crust of the earth. This space, which extends a full 52 kilometers at its widest point, extends down to nearly 43 kilometers at its presumed deepest point, the terminal zero point, appears to have formed naturally between 450 and 50, 560 million years ago. The walls of the cavern are covered almost entirely in the aforementioned roots of the tree, leading to research leading researchers to believe that the tree's root structure at one point extended down into the earth as opposed to up from I mean, as it does now. The floor of the cavern is covered in a, th in a 200 meter thick cloud of toxic fog, which flows from a jagged opening on the side of this tree. The composition of the fog is unknown. Living creatures who breathe the substance after near immediate loss of neurological function and inspect graphic analysis of the substance have has been inconclusive. While SCPs, while this tree's oldest growth roots are stationary, and despite the fact that this tree is biologically inert, sections of new growth are immobile and hostile. Roots that appear above ground and will attempt to pull anything by I, I, them, man, animal, machine, or otherwise into the cavern below through the soil. This effect can be temporarily mitigated by ceasing movement entirely. First, those who find themselves close within a section of this root system can quickly lie down and stay as little as possible until fire teams arrive to push the roots back. However, due to the rapid rate at which these roots grow, it is likely that a person attempting to avoid being seized by the root system could unintentionally find themselves being swallowed and suffocated by a mass of roots growing around them, if they are not reached by the teams quickly enough. The tree is accessible via a large cylindrical stone access shaft located roughly 7.5 kilometers from the inverted base of the entity. A stairwell is built into the side of the shaft, though it ends just below the tip of the cavern ceiling in a manner indicating that it originally extended beyond that point. Radar scans of the bottom of the cavern indicate that the majority floor of the cavern is powered by a vast forest of tall, thick, dark trees. Surrounding the eastern edge of the forest and particularly Unfortunately, the clearing of the walls of the cavern is an extensive network of ancient ruins that are partially covered by the toxic fog. SCP-6666-A, which I think I'm going to call the Demon Lahire, is a, a vaguely humanoid entity partially emerging from the jagged an opening in the side of uh, the tree. The entity is believed to be roughly 23 meters in height. I've been missing a lot of these footnotes. With six arms and six sides, set in two columns of three each. The entity appears to have numerous scars and burns across its skin. One of its six arms is significantly larger than the other five, and is at least partially fused at the wrist with, an iron, with a large iron spear roughly 18 meters in length, which appears to have been using as leverage to pierce and open the, open the side of the tree. The higher has no ears, nose, or mouth, and but is capable of speech. Its sound produced by the higher originates in the space where a mouth would be, vocalizing in a currently unknown language. The higher will respond to stimuli, though rarely becomes distracted from its apparent in state of permanent torment. Lahire seems to be capable of localized biological regeneration, putting in, it in constant flex between the ambient destruction of its body as a result of exposure to the open cavity of, as, of the tree and its own reconstruction. While Lahire has responded to Foundation provided stimuli, it has thus far not attempted to communicate with any Foundation personnel or vehicles. It is unknown if Lahire is even aware of that it is being communicated with. 
This demon is, according to information gathered from interviews with Seth, the demon Hector. Oh, I got the demon wrong. My bad. The demon Hector, one of four from I'm, I'm evil entities originally from a long since it's lost near human civilization. Hector, as well as. Uh, oh. Lancelot. SCP-2254 and a yet undiscovered fourth entity are potentially many millions of years old, if not older. Hector, as well as the tree itself, predate all known human civilization and possibly the existence of much of the Earth itself. <sighs> now we get into the very long addendums, which I'm guessing are what makes up most of this document. Oh yeah, the higher is the one that I can't read about. <sighs> Addendum 66661 Discovery Prehistoric information related to SCP to this tree is extremely scarce. Information gathered from several sources indicate that numerous populations of humans existed in and around on the tree. The access point, but little remains of artifacts at what tie specific group city area. In his proposal to the Project Paragon senior leadership of the Alienate Foundation's current understanding of those groups, the researcher Dr. Osman Isles described his team's findings as such. <clears throat> the description of SCP-4008, the warm anomaly, has cast doubt on everything we know about our own history. As a weapon developed by a prehistorical or SCP-1000 civilization, the Wormwood, that was capable of swallowing entire ethnic groups, their cities, their histories, and more, essentially erasing these civilizations from the historical record. Our study of the SCP-4008 anomaly continued to point back towards a source, a historical black hole, something that we could not even find a very trace of. The Amazon is not known for being kind to the records of those who have lived there, the soil and humanity grind stone and bone into dust, but in one un unplaced more than anywhere else we saw nothing, no trace of human civilization, no records of human habit habitation, nothing. It is in this black hole that we know we could find it, the root from which the wormwood grows. Atlas, the effort that predates Paragon, began mapping these forests 40 years ago, starting with the very edge of what we you know, and spiraling inward. Lost in the darkness beneath that can canopy was a vacuum, one that pulled us towards it with unyielding force. Each meter of land we found, absent of any trace of humans, was another breadcrumb from towards the open door of what we eventually found. A dark hole in the middle of history. We had puzzled over what tree could bear the fruit of the wormwood, and now we know it was a dead one. Formal contact of the tree began with the creation of Project Paragon. After an information gathered by the now defunct Operation Atlas, as well as information taken over, taken from SCP 4840 and 4840 A, it led to the discovery of the vertical access shaft into the void containing this tree. <sighs> Given that um, this is so long, I'm going to read this. It's a dead num, and then I'm going to end the video here, and we're going to kind of make a series out of this. Addendum 66662 Paragon Leadership Meeting Transcript The following is an excerpt from a recorded meeting of Project Paragon Director Shannon Lancaster, Director of Antediluvian and Research Director Recorin Mathis, and Sappho's as Chief of uh, Staff Alexandro Afraitis, held on April 23rd, 2019. Internal Audio Recording Transcript In Attendance Paragon Director Shannon Lancaster Department of Antediluvian and Research Director 
Corn Mathis, Cephas Chief Alexand, Androv Aetis. I want to thank you in advance about being on top of our perimeter issue. Don't feel the need to we have to contact my, my office if we need to do that again. The situation is necessitated. It. It's getting hard to push the growth back. Recycling day and night shifts and it's helping, but only very early. How long do you expect before we'll need to move it again? Rough guess, two weeks. That's not great. What about our alternate ad access proposal? On hold for the moment. All of our test sites have got on bogged down almost immediately. It's a web of roots down there and they're tough. You'd be able to convince me they were made of stone. Right, we'll release we'll recess that once we have Crow on the seam on site. Sorry to keep you waiting, Corin. You're fine. I got a chance to read your a report. What did you think? What do you think? In general, everything below that pit is old. Hundreds of thousands, if not millions. We've only had drones in a, a short time, but the mapping we've done so far has been really something. What about the floor level? Beneath the cloud? Hard to say. We've got so... What we've got so far or has just been snippets and grainy radar or returns for the structures outside the air, around the outside. None of it's telling, but something else you might find interesting. None of it is South American. What do you mean? You know how we had been talking about looking for the missing civilizations out here? When we first got down on there, or our first guesses were that we would find them under that haze, but none of what we've seen even remotely matches anything built by human hands in the last 10,000 years. Whatever it is, it predates humanity as we currently understand it. As for whatever is in that forest, your guess is as good as mine. That's a start. Where do you think we go next? We need to gather more information. Building our viewing decks and staring at that thing all day isn't going to make it spread answers. There's something going on down there and we need to, more resources if we want to figure it out. <sighs> Where do you want to start? The SCP-1000 file would be great. Are you familiar with SCP-2932? Adjacently, why do you ask? Alexandra can probably tell you more. I think Cephas grabbed a bunch of stuff from there a while back. The long and short of it, it is that there's some entity who says that SV-1000, the children of the night, or the Bigfoot as it were, they use that place as a prison. I don't have clearance to know what all they've got locked up, but I do know that the magical core that keeps the lights on over there is is big red gem. The girl and running around on an and it says that it's the heart of Titania, a goddess who pulled out her own heart to keep the children of the night safe. But I know that this goes against everything we were taught as researchers. I've read enough, enough Shakespeare to know that Titania isn't a Bigfoot god. It's a fairy god. You're not wrong. What about the tree? What do you know about it? It's dead. It's been dead for a long time. By the looks of it, everything about it looks dead, even at a cellular level. Which would probably surprise our friends in HEP-1 or anyone else that has ever gotten caught up in those, those roots and pulled into the ground. There's no biological activity happening anywhere. We've taken samples. The smoke has got to be coming from somewhere, and the roots are still mobile. So your guess is as good as mine. I mean, there's a reason why it's an anomaly. This might be one of them. Just an upside tree, upside down tree could uh, be done anyway. Anyway, tell me more about the smoke. Well, sorry, it's not really smoke, even though it looks like it. It's more like a really fine pollen. The reason we're having so much trouble with it is that it's a really potent neurotoxin. Any of it, even a speck, it, it's on on you, in you, wherever your entire nervous system starts shutting down in seconds. We don't have a way to bring people back from long-term CNS depression, and while we've got pressurized suits that could potentially get our people in there, even the slightest exposure could be fatal if not treated immediately. We're still conducting material testing to see if it can get through the poly shields on our insertion suits. Hmm. 
but do you think we can get boots on the ground? We're working on the logistics right now. Director Matt Atlas has been insistent that we won't really know the full story until we can get through that cloud. I understand, but in the meantime, is there anything we that we can get into? I'm working on it. Once we get the immediate area mapped, I should be able to come up with something. Those roots have been pulling stuff from all over this area down into ground for what looks like ages. We'll get some clues there. Alright, keep me in the loop there. Dr. Mathis, I request I can request a clearance you're looking for. What else do you need? We need to bring someone bring in someone from the SU team. Corin, you know we can't do that. I know you think we can, but I don't know what else to tell you, Director. There is a limit to what I can come up with. There just isn't a written history for any of this. They got lucky with whatever they came up with over in Europe. I mean that someone had written and something down about it. But out here, first-hand account is the best we've got. We need to talk to one of these things. Get whatever we can out of them. They're going to know more about what happened here than what we've got right now. Dustin... And best guesses, if it were up to me, we would have been freed a dozen fairies by now. But I don't have the resources to make that happen. <sighs> Fine, I'll work on it. Anything else? We need to talk to Kane. You're joking. Kane. I'm not. Abel isn't very talkative and Seth has been sitting on his rock for the last few million years. We need someone who has first-hand accounts of things that occurred before human beings even considered writing down their history. There's one person we know of who was both alive at the time and has a photographic memory. Alright, I'll work on that too. Is that all? One more thing you probably need to know. The agents we have stationed in our observation platforms have been coming back with some mild psychological symptoms recently. General uncertainty, unease, a few have had travel sleeping. Dr. Reese wanted to know about staff rotations the other day. We probably need to move ahead with the next personnel deployment. Let's do that. Director Crow will be coming on site next week. We need to make sure we're on top of things here. Fair enough. I'll make sure we have all our ducks in a row before when the director gets here. We'll take care of the personnel issue as well, Director. Thank you, both of you. Keep me updated. Well, this would be about two hours, but I really don't have the energy to read for two hours straight. So, that's the end of this for today. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. If you did not enjoy this, then at least you only wasted 23 minutes instead of two hours. It looks like this is a really big upside down tree that needs to be taken. That needs to be studied for a better understanding of the history of the SCP Foundation and anomalies in general. I hope to see you all in the next video where we go over and more addendums of this document and maybe the additional parts that I don't know about yet as this is a really long document and I haven't the time to read it all in one day. I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye!